and we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast. New episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I am your host, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real vs. World. And today's guest is Chris Parsons, a photographer best known for his work as Kendrick Lamar's personal tour photographer and videographer. On top of that, Parsons is also an excellent studio photographer and has worked with massive brands like Nike and Jordan. In this episode, Parsons takes us back to his college days where he initially studied architecture, but eventually dropped out to pursue an interest in graphic design. He later began working on album covers and websites and was even getting hired to create MySpace layouts for famous artists when he connected with rapper B.O.B. He tells the story about how he landed a gig as B.O.B.'s videographer on tour without even owning a camera or knowing much about shooting video, which is absolutely insane. We learned about how he spent all of his money to capitalize on a sudden opportunity to shoot for Kendrick Lamar, flying across the country from New York to LA only to miss Kendrick's performance. Parsons breaks down and shares the struggle of hitting rock bottom at that point, thinking it was all over, which was the realest shit I've ever heard. But as you can all guess, he eventually got the phone call of a lifetime that would send him touring the world, creating content for Kendrick, leading to major brand deals, and establishing himself as a full-time creator in Los Angeles with his own photo studio. This come up story is as real as it gets, and I'm excited to share this episode with you today. If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, you are probably wondering, what the fuck is Black With No Cream? Great question. Black With No Cream is the illest educational resource for content creators fueled by caffeine. Or at least I take my coffee Black With No Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We have thousands of members from all around the world working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our private group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. All right, that's it. Enjoy the work we keep creating. Make sure to tune in every single Wednesday and Sunday for a new Black Window Cream podcast episode. And if you enjoyed this podcast, leave us a review on iTunes because every review helps our podcast grow and reach new creators. Uh, And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream. Subscribe to us on YouTube to access all of our educational content and share this episode out with someone who needs it if you find it helpful. Um, And without further ado, I bring to you my episode with Chris Parsons in the most epic podcast intro ever created. Right motherfucking now! Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. Back back with another episode <laughs> just like disturbing the peace you're like what the fuck uh okay ladies and gentlemen this is a, a special guest i so when i started this podcast right i had this like document document had names on it and chris parsons was one of the top three names on my hit list that's what i call it it's not a murder hit list it's just my hit list of podcast guests so today i'm, I'm excited to announce he's here <laughs> I did it. Congratulations. <laughs> you caught yourself a unicorn. I manifest that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, dog, but we go. Okay, so I met you. This My backstory to how I know you, because I like to set that shit up, is, uh, I mean, obviously I've seen your work for Mad Long. Didn't know it was your work for Mad Long. And then slowly I fell into the TD uh, loophole. And at Coachella, we had to share a hotel room together. You brought in your big ass iMac. <laughs> he brought his iMac to Coachella. He's trying to, I think you were trying to bu- find like a 7200 or something off of uh, like Squarespace or one of those apps. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And uh, and then we we bonded, bro, and you became my friend. Yeah. And I'm proud. I'm glad to say you're my boy. That's crazy. I thought we were friends like a total full two years before that. We might have been. I don't remember, but I, that's all I remember is really connected and talking some shit on like okay. our life journeys and, uh, you know, this and that. But, uh, yeah, you're on the podcast. Thank you for coming through, bro. Of course. Um, I've already pre- There's an intro that happens before this, so I tell everyone how dope you are. But in a nutshell, how would you describe yourself as a creative? Hmm. In a nutshell. Maybe like a high fashion runway show in a trap house. Uh, did you think, did that just come out the dome? Yeah, it just came out the dome. That's tight. That's I just try to blend those two worlds. I love high fashion, but then I love also just like the raw, gritty, like, uh, yeah. I love putting two different worlds together. Right. You're the Like the photography that you have, I feel like is always borderline like edgy. 
with like the way you create or whatever but the mixture of way like i don't know it's just the definition of faces that you bring to the lens is like fucking ill to me i don't yeah. know you just do it in a specific way that i don't think a lot of people can get near so congratulations that's fucking ill as shit thank you um but yeah we met at, at, that was like damn that was a while back that was a long time ago and I remember like I didn't really know what to do like I was like all right so what are we all doing here because we didn't really know we we're just like creating shit you were shooting Kendrick I was shooting with Q and then uh we shot that festival that night and I remember I think we were both like editing and like you fell asleep sitting up at your iMac like it was like and I was like damn we got we're gonna die out here but then yeah a lot of things have happened since then you've been you traveled around the world a million times did this and that um and you've kind of just murdered it. You're working with campaigns and doing like what Nike. You did some shit with Nike. Yeah, Nike and Jordan, and yeah, I've been uh, blessed to get some really great projects come my way. But you're originally from where? Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. Is that the Gators? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -oh. No. Ja Jaguars. Jaguars. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. All right, cool. Are you a Jaguars fan? Yep. Are you really? Yeah, of course. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have a uh, like a pro team. In Iowa. Honestly, I don't get to watch a lot of games. I haven't watched games in a while. Do you feel like that happened once you moved out here? Uh, for sure, yeah. Probably once I make that switch to really locking in, I stop really having the time to sit and watch. But I always watch like Super Bowl and playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I like when it's really getting good and right. You know, are they good? Do they win Super Bowls? I don't know. <laughs> Who's won the last Super Bowl? I don't forget. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like with this shit, what I really want to get into is like, this. your story is crazy. Like, and I know your story to an extent, obviously, uh, we've shared our stories and shit with each other personally. And like the hustle of you getting on Kendrick's tour early on, that was probably one of your first large clients. Is that safe to say? Or had you worked with other artists and shit before then? Yeah, no, I worked with other artists before then. Uh, before my, um, I guess before doing tour photography and videography, I was a graphic designer. And, and especially like when MySpace was really big, I was oh, all yeah. like the custom MySpace. The backgrounds? Yeah, all the backgrounds. Really? And putting like full websites up in Damn. the banners. But um, I worked with a lot of artists uh, then and um, doing that, the graphic design actually led me into the videography because I was working with B.O.B. Uh, and his, um, his, his manager was like, yo, I'm telling you, Bob gonna be the, the one you gotta you know get down. And I was like, I'm trying to tell, like, I, I realized, you know, you can't hear the voice inside my head. So I was like, I'll just say it. So I was like, yo, um, if you need someone to shoot your tour, I'll do it for free. <laughs> and then I didn't really think he was going to even say anything or take right. it serious or whatever. So uh, he called me back like uh, in an hour. He's like, yo, uh, talk to Bob. Um, we got a spot for you on the tour bus. Meet us in Boston next week. Mind you, I had never shot video before. I was just doing graphic design. I was Did just, you have a camera and shit? No, I didn't have a camera, a computer. <laughs> I never edited video before. But I had like fifteen hundred dollars saved up, so I went on Craigslist, got a, a janky like laptop, downloaded a janky version of uh, Final Cut yeah. Pro, went on YouTube, and then uh, I googled tour photography <laughs> lenses and camera, and then I rented it. And as then, we all do, yeah. And I, I watched a bunch of videos. I think at that time I was watching uh, Ryan Leslie have really dope like uh, clips of that time. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was uh, watching his, and then I, I landed and just just faked it was he doing like the black and white shits yeah those like t like documentaries about his life or whatever yeah is that yep. what it was at the time damn yep. that is crazy yep. you super winged it yeah Where, what happened <laughs> like did they oh i landed and i went on the whole tour and uh he was open up for lupe and i was like huge lupe fan yeah but i couldn't shoot lupe because i wasn't on his crew and then i remember the last show he was like complaining like yo i got all these flip cameras but i got no no footage or nothing and then I lupe was, yeah lupe yeah and i just happened to be there and i was like yo uh i'll shoot for you yeah and then um yeah you know i ended up shooting that show and uh it was a it was a dope experience i remember walking it was like the last hurrah of the tour and um finally you know take a picture with them and we're walking down the hall and uh i told lupe i was like man i was like this is like a dream come true and then he told me he's like dreams need to come true and i was like whoa damn I was like, Whoa. damn. Then what? 
And he's like, see ya. <laughs> Hopped on stage yeah. and dipped on the jet. Yeah, as my life works and then the next chapter begins. But so what, like, then what the fuck did you do to provide B.O.B. with, like, content on that tour? Was it like you were putting shit together, trying to figure out how to put oh shit together? Oh, my God, it was a nightmare. Did so anything I didn't, happen? I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I managed to do, like, eight webisodes that, really? that month. Yeah. Which Damn. I didn't know what the quota should be so i just kept that seems going. like a lot back then too like what? it's not easy yeah, to was... create like you know what i mean like web series yeah it was were they are they good are they still online oh they're still online are they really yep, yep damn what search. year was that that, that lupe tour was like it's like the stepping lasers tour yeah that was like 2011 yeah it was a while fuck damn so that's crazy so then were they like cool with the fact that you were like did they find out that you were new or was it just kind of like everyone was just kind of like i don't know oh no they didn't know i was new i totally faked it i just like i don't know how honestly i think he just went off the fact that uh you know my graphic design and trusted me but so when you were doing all right so when you're doing graphic design you're like creating these layouts like for people who fucking are young MySpace was the shit and it's like having Facebook but you can customize your background and create like a whole aesthetic and that shit was like highly lucrative like people have full time jobs creating that shit like the hustle was very real Yeah. Um, and you wanted to have a lit ass MySpace because that's you know how you based if you were cool or not so you were doing that shit where you when you say like you hit them up and were like yo I'll shoot that for free are you like going t- to them to talk like when you're working on the project are you like working on it in real time with somebody or was it like you're updating the myspace and sending them ideas online and then because isn't bob from like minnesota or some shit no atlanta oh he is from atlanta yeah so would you go to atlanta to like work with them on it or how did it what was like oh no no no. i was just working from at that time i was in tallahassee florida and you're just on on the phone and shit yeah yeah. oh okay yeah so how do you know like you just kind of like sent it and we're just like all right like you heard in a conversation that they need a video or something no i just just asked yeah i just saw the opportunity and just created it that's so dope damn yeah that's crazy so what was that like for you like going on i mean how well, old were you I, at the time um i was i'm not sure maybe 24 or something like that but this time i had i hadn't really traveled the country before like i had only seen like a city or two you know outside of florida right really never really been on too many flights so all of a sudden i'm getting to see almost like every state it was you know a, a whirlwind damn you never get that first tour that first experience or that first tour with an artist like that's a, it's a magical experience right you you were what went to college for graphic design or you just started no, i went to college for uh, architecture and then uh i did that for about three years and then uh after visiting the offices and the firms i was like ah oh, this is definitely not me right i wanted to graphic design did that for a year then i just dropped out cause but I, like you taught you just taught yourself graphic design shit like or is architecture like very similar in the programming and how you design stuff is that i don't know uh, architecture i still use architecture and photography it just really taught me about uh creative problem solving where you can have this one problem and there could be like 50 different solutions for the same problem. Uh. So it's just that kind of way of thinking, always kind of asking myself, what if? That's kind of what I learned and then it just kind of went into graphic design. And yeah, uh, graphic design was a lot of self-taught, but I had a really amazing internship when I first started. Oh, really? A guy by the name of uh, Justin Huff, he like changed my life. You know, he was doing photography and really inspired me to get into that. So what was like, was the main the main job doing MySpace stuff or was it like all graphic design? Oh yeah, it was like album covers, oh, websites, really? coding, uh, you know, I was doing Hustler. all kind of, yeah, <laughs> man of many hats over here. Yeah, <laughs> I guess, fuck. That shit's crazy, that shit's, that's funny. What a weird ass, like, like what did everyone think when you left? You're like, yo, uh, I'm going on tour with this rapper and it's like a big ass tour and like, I'll see you. Like for your family or whoever you're uh, yeah, everyone's uh, excited, you know? But they didn't want to understand it because, like, you didn't even have the camera before. You're like, yeah, I'm a cameraman now. I'm out. And they'd be like, well, you don't practice this. <laughs> yeah, no, my family's pretty used to my uh, crazy, you know, last-minute ways. So, yeah. Yeah. It just wasn't, dip. wasn't a shock. Right. So then you do that tour, you know, that transitions to, like, you finish that. When you get off the road, you're going back to Florida? Uh, yes. And then what? Like, you're just back there? You yeah, get, back there. Do you take back, back to, the job? Back to square one. But did you get, were you, did no, you go I back to graphic design? Oh, no, no, no. Um, let's see. Yeah, I did actually went to graphic design for a little bit. Um, and then I, after this is when I started to pick up photography more and become more serious about it once I saw, like, the possibilities. So you start, like, 
looking like for inspiration like were you finding people that you were looking up to like you said ryan leslie at the beginning like as you started kind of like learning more about the camera the art of shooting photos were you like starting to pay attention to other people that are either shooting artists or fashion or whatever like was there any inspiration from like at that point or was it just kind uh, of yeah, like my yeah those uh but most of them aren't alive like helmut newton irvin penn okay um i really love like the portraits and uh henry cartier Bresson. like just you know i listened to his audio clips there's a period of my life like a couple of months i would just listen to his audio clips every night i listen to Helmut Newton interviews. I'd watch them work any kind of way to try to manifest that, that feeling that of wanting to be, you know, be the best. Mm. How would you find that? Like, how are you finding that these artists? Like, what did you do? You know what I mean? Like for me, it's like you get into it at the time. I, I remember like loving music videos back in Iowa, but I didn't know like what a director really was. Like I knew a director of a movie, but I didn't understand that there's someone that was in charge of like coming up with creative for the music video. I thought I always thought it was the artist and shit. I'm like, man, that'd be so cool to be an artist and create your own music videos. Then yeah. you start learning about directors. Then you realize who they are and you, you know what I mean? You start deep diving into this shit. Like how do you even go about finding that stuff? Man, I just dive into a lot of rabbit holes at night after I work. I really try to feed my uh, subconscious with as much uh, visuals at nighttime. Like after I'm done and I'm like, it's time to relax. Um, you know, I just have on some good music mm -hmm. and I either like go on Pinterest and just like, you know, go crazy, like saving all different types of move or boards or for different vibes. Yeah. Or uh, like I say, just watching old uh, interviews of other photographers and being able to like uh, find BTS videos of them working and right. realize, you know, that not so much different from where I'm at right now or, uh, from any of my friends. Right. Was it so? OK, so you go back you're doing graphic design. You're paying attention to all these people so you start practicing like as in shooting for like getting clients like you're trying to do paid work or were you just trying to like shoot for? Uh, i was just shooting anything, anything and everything yeah money really didn't matter still doesn't even really matter right um but yeah it was just i love it so much it's like i almost like i'll pay someone to shoot them that's how much i love it so much and how much how rewarding it is yeah we were just walking when i went and picked him up outside for the office to do this we were walking there was like a nurse downstairs that was like smoking a cig and he like walked up and talked to her real quick and then she's like no 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 and i was like what the fuck you try to get a cig he's like no i just wanted to shoot her face but i didn't have anything ready on my phone to like not shoot her face that sounds good. Yeah, yeah photograph her face yeah. uh because she had a unique look and he told her, but she, I don't think she was just like, I uh, know. <laughs> yeah. But so the I tactic, know. your tactic is that you usually would like have examples of like, yeah, your yeah work. you gotta have your work up first. Otherwise right. you just sound like a creepy guy. Like, hey, I have this idea. I just need to film you for about 30 seconds. I'm yeah, like, yeah, works out of here. You gotta have your work up there immediately. So then what, when, when did like, where do you go from there? Like, how does that transpire into more work for you? You start becoming way more active in, in learning and you're just shooting for the art and you're trying to understand yourself as an artist. Like yeah. when did, what was the next big like move that happened for you and how did they, how'd you get to that point? Hmm. Let's see. Cause how long you go, you get off tour. It's so crazy. You go on tour and you go back to real life. Like even when you come back to LA after a tour, you're just like, all right, this is my real life. What am I doing again? Cause yeah, throws your whole shit off a month two months six months whatever and you come home and you're just like all right my day is not planned anymore i gotta figure out this shit you're back in florida what is the move for you as you start growing like did you feel like you wanted to get to la at a certain point or no nah, la was uh well yeah this is where the next chapter i guess comes in um i was in new york and um i remember going to summer jam and i'm shooting at the outdoor stage and um I'm, uh, I'm like, yo, ASAP is gonna be there tonight. I gotta shoot this, so I'm there shooting. And then uh, my friend, really good friend, uh, Rhett One, is like, yo, I'm in New York. I'm with TDE, whatever. We're, you know, we're coming to to the show, whatever. So I'm there, and I, he pulls up, and then he's with Kendrick, and this I remember the first time I met him, and got a quick little portrait there, and got to you know see him perform, and I was just like, whoa, this is. Like, this is it right here. Cause uh, at that time, I really was uh, fascinated with uh, Kanye West glow in the dark photo book. Mm. Okay. And I would like uh, shop on the bill. Um, I would have it opened up like uh, almost like a ritual. Like, I would see this picture and I'd see it open to this like beautiful, colorful image of Kanye on stage. And I'd be like, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to do this for Kendrick. And I would just keep like picturing it, like, and I would do. You said this before that moment happened where you met him. No, this is like I, after after meeting one. Kendrick, yeah. yeah, and after really like 
you know hearing his music and knowing like whoa this is this is historic right, right. Here, you know so um Segway I, I, back to the MySpace days. I, I actually I met Rhett One through MySpace. Really? Yeah, because I, I remember I did a I did a MySpace page for artist uh, G Malone in LA. Okay. And Rhett saw me off of there. I used to do work under as a pixel pusher. Wait, so how would you make your? Ta- what was the, the tag? Like how tag do you- was like this like old English like font of like pixel pusher. It was like pixel pusher such yeah. a hard ass name but what did you was it in the like did it like lit did, I, I don't remember anyone ever having like their tag on the home page but oh, would yeah, it be? i had it oh yeah it was like obvious grandiose up there yep pixel pusher right damn that's tight yeah so you was, do so you did that shout out to Rhett. Rhett sees that yeah, yeah so that's how we connected became homies and then uh fast forward to the future now Rhett's working with tde and every time they would kind of come out to new york I started becoming like an extra photographer and uh, I remember one night um, um, Kendrick had a show in New York and then like two days after he had a show in uh, LA right and it's the night before and I was like thinking I was like yo like uh, shout out to all my other homies who are like thugging out with me at this time but I was like yo we're all in New York I was like no one's in LA I was like I'll just fly myself to LA and I'll shoot that show and then they'll be able to see me by myself because it was always like a couple of people. I could never really get my shot. Oh, right. Um, At the shows, like shooting a show like with like five other photographers, you mean, or something like that? Maybe like three other photographers, yeah. But um, yeah, I remember I'm I'm in a bar with my homie Anwar from college. It's like one in the morning and I'm telling him the story. Like, and he's like, bro, what are you doing here right now? It's like, go to the airport and fucking fly to LA. So I had to borrow money actually. I remember I borrowed some money I uh, got my flight and went out and then uh, this show, Rhett wasn't there. So, you know, the homies, I'm kind of new to the homies. Right. I saw Kendrick walked in and said, what's up? And I heard him perform and then he said, peace out. And, you know, by the time I got in, I missed the whole moment. Damn. So now I'm stranded in L.A. I got evicted from my spot in New York. Okay, wait. So, yeah, to pedal back, you moved to New York from Florida. Yeah. So, you were living in New York for a minute. Yeah. So, you, you and the I homies did like were a year, living? a year in New York. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. you get evicted in the time that you were in LA? Yeah, in that time, yeah. Because I was already kind of like skating by ice, being kind of late with rent. So yeah, right. This was like, yeah, the like you gotta go. Yeah, it's over. So, uh, I ended up crashing without a homie spot. And then I remember it was like right before New Year's Eve, and um, my girlfriend dumped me. My homie was like, bro, I love you, but end of this month, man, I don't really think you could stay here. In New York? Uh, I'm in L.A. now. Okay, you, stay, you just stayed in L.A.? Yeah. So you just came out here and stayed here? Yeah. Damn. So <laughs> the night of, I have this letter I wrote to God like December 30th at like 11 p.m. And I was just like in tears. Fuck. I was like, God, I've done everything. like everything you know and uh bro this shit got me chilling this is crazy yeah i guess sometimes you run, 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 and you forget. But, yeah. Damn. I mean, we... So we, I, I yeah. wrote this letter, and I, I wrote to God. I was like, I've tried everything. Please, I surrender. Like, whatever. Right. And the next day, Rhett calls me. He's like, hey, bro, what are you doing tonight? Uh, we need somebody to shoot New Year's Eve show. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll do it. I got nothing else to do. And then finally, this was the night I got to shoot... Um, it's like New Year's Eve show. Um, it's like right after Good Kid, Mad City dropped. Right. And then first time I get to shoot by myself, and then I um, I remember I stayed up that night, and I just edit that shit. And then by the time they woke up that morning, they had like a three-and-a-half-minute clip like done. Oh, you're doing video? Yeah. Okay. And they, uh, you know, ended up they liked it. They put it out, and uh, maybe like a couple of weeks later, they're going on tour, and I like went to Rhett. I remember it was like the night, two nights before I was like, bro, I have never begged anybody for anything, bro, but I am begging you right now. I was like, I need this shit more than anything else. I was like, I can't go back to Florida. It's like, 
my family I can't be a failure right now right like, they're, they're all looking up to me so uh they go on tour. I don't go on tour. I see like on Instagram, like first night, second night, you just see all the fans. And then the next day um, I get a call from this random number. I was like, who the fuck is this? And I pick it up and it's Rhett. And he's like, yo, what's up, fool? And I'm like, yo, how's it going out there? He's like, man, this shit's going crazy. Like fans loving it. Like they know all the lyrics, da, 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 da. And I'm just like, just like, ugh. It's great, man. Wish chest. you were here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, tight, see ya. <laughs> and, but then he's like, he's like, hey, fool, do me a favor. He's like. He's like, send me a picture of your, your passport. He's like, we, uh, we're flying you to Dublin tomorrow. And it was just like, just as I was about to hit the ground, like, what? I had to realize, like, I had the wings the whole time. It's like, you, you know, I jumped off. Like, I sacrificed everything. everything. Um, Living yeah. with, like, one bag. Like, everything was with you. Like, you didn't even go back to New York to grab your shit. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Bro, what? So... Dublin. So was it? What was the tour? Was it going all over the place? Like they had just done a couple. That US was the shows? Europe. The Europe tour. Yeah. Oh shit! For Good Kid, Mad City. Yeah, it's like 2013. So when they left, it they they didn't have no one shooting for it. that. They're just that was it. Yeah, no. I was like, yo, this is history, guys. Somebody got to fucking for be real. Out there. If it's not me, at least somebody, bro. Somebody. Fuck. So you go to Dublin. Yeah. You're like never been out of the country at this point, right? Yeah, never been out. Well, I've been out to the country the one time I went to Tokyo before this. That's pretty dope. Yeah. But all right, so you're going out there for for creativity though. Yep. Was was Tokyo for work? Yeah, yeah it was for work. Well, goddamn it. All right. Sorry. It's not as tight then. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying you hit rock bottom. Oh yeah, no. Hit yeah. rock motherfucking bottom and then within like from the time you wrote that letter to the time you flew to Dublin, how much time it passed like Oh, like 2 weeks. 2 probably. weeks. Yeah. So, and at this point, your boy is about to kick you off the couch? Yeah, which I understood. Like, if Fuck somebody yeah. crashed, right. out, like, come on, I probably would say the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. To not totally fair. But I'm saying, you're about to get kicked out. Girl's gone. You're just, like, trying to figure out what the... what Was there any other backup plan while you were there? Is there, like... No. There's nothing else? No, I never like the, make the backup plan. I just... Whatever I want, I just jump off and give up everything and figure it out. And don't stop until you figure it out. shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you go to Dublin, and then what, like... Is it instant like instruction on what they wanted, or was it just like go do what you did at that last thing we had you at, and just try to do that a bunch of times? Or Pretty like, much, yeah. I mean, it was some loose structure. Kind of knew what I was kind of getting for photos, videos, and just tell a story. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, but you know, you don't realize why all these things these things are being like taken away from you, but you're being prepared for something else. Like I didn't need that apartment didn't you know yeah. need all these things at that time because i was getting prepared for something else damn and then from there i mean that's like the biggest like this is his breakout moment for real i, I mean they're tour they toured i felt like for fucking 10 years like you know what i mean good kid yeah. like rocked everywhere every show was crazy you're going out you're doing all the tour vlog type shit it was it was like vloggy right kind of like yeah like tour vlogs plus photos but yeah photos yeah was were photos going to like his Instagram or something at the time? Like, did he was Instagram booming at that point? Nah, not really. Yeah, photos are Facebook or something. Photos are, are just kind of get lost in wherever. They are lost in whenever. <laughs> no, no, no. We we got some things planned. It's, it's uh, right, but still, like at the time, was it like if you look at it now, it's like when people go on tour, it's like you know you you they want content for stories they want content for facebook all that shit but at the time it was more focused on the videos like what they were like yeah. you were shooting photos but the main focus was like let's get videos out so everyone sees how crazy this shit is yeah i remember watching this shit in iowa were you at the good kid was the new year's thing when he performed on a bus or something like they like pulled up in la and like did a performance on oh, like yeah, a red yeah. bus yeah was that the new year show or was that just like nah. a release show or yeah, something it's probably like a release show yeah Cause I remember watching that and then he goes on the tour and I remember being mad inspired by the videos of his like journey in Europe. Cause you start in Europe, right? Yeah. That's where the videos start. Yeah. So for me as a fan in Iowa and also inspired by the content side of shit, I'm watching this stuff like geeked up, having no idea that I'll eventually know you, which is hilarious, but I'm watching this stuff like, fuck this life is insane like his life exploding because kendra got booked in iowa um 
before Good Kid blew up, and I think they got him like mad cheap. And then the album comes out and just crushes. And so everyone was trying to buy these tickets. Everyone was trying to resell these tickets. I had got one. I was excited because I'm sitting here watching him blow up. I got like deathly sick and couldn't go, and I was like wanting to hate my life. Uh, but I, I'm just seeing this explosion, and the way you captured it was what you were talking about. Like you're documenting history. Like that. Like those moments. Like I remember the music video you guys did at the airport. Uh, and like when you guys were just chilling up. Yeah, we were really just bored on a layover and just was like, yo, let's just go and make a music video. Just did a full on music video yeah. on the fly, like <laughs> no big deal. But I remember watching this, just like I don't know, I don't know how to explain the feelings because you look at it like the freedom of being able to be creative with another creative who has built a platform or is building on the way to building a massive platform that is like loved by all was like the coolest. Uh, need I wanted to fulfill for myself if that makes sense like yeah. the ability to go and I don't know your story at the time when you're in Iowa you think that and I learned this real quick when I got out here that you think like oh man all these people that are behind all these things that are just making bank they probably live in those Hollywood hills like fucking balling out and shit and then we get out here and you realize the real truth that like we all go through the ringer trying to figure out how to make a bag when you're doing these jobs yeah. and so like you know I did sleeping on the floor for, I slept on the floor for like fucking 15 months straight and it was just you literally had nowhere to go yeah. you know what i mean and then you moved into like fucking private jets and hotels and planes and buses and shit yeah oh, that's crazy i don't know how i'm trying to get it i guess it's just exciting to hear like it's exciting for me to see your growth in that shit because the shit that you made would like literally level me up in my head and prepare me for when i came out here because i would watch them over and over and over again you see these like you'd interview people or whatever you'd hear like these people and speaking like broken english but because you guys are in europe and shit and, yeah. and they're just so excited about kendrick and i'm like this is so fucking crazy like this shit is so surreal i don't know why because it's like you feel like you kind of grow up with them in a sense yeah through your content so what is it like for you when you're making that shit knowing that people like me are being affected by it or did you even realize at the time or were you just like this oh is yeah just when time. i'm photographing like i'm i'm looking at the i'm thinking about the generations that aren't here like i want to tell the story of what it was like to be in these environments be right. in these spaces that you know no matter how much money you have there you can't buy a ticket to get in some of these rooms that you know we're blessed to be a part of yeah so i take the i take the responsibility very serious to capture it you know not to uh i want to get coffee right now but there's like a moment happening that I have to get, you know, there's anticipating like every moment, it can get nerve wracking. It can build your anxiety up to a max because, you know, the lighting is always changing. That moment, you know, is literally a split second. You can never- Chris, get the shot. You're like, yeah. fuck, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, and you have to be prepared because that's, mm. that's a scenario that still happens. Just happens two days ago to me, you know, you're on set and, you know, you, you really can't plan, you, you know, you plan for, you know, whatever you you may see foresee but it doesn't come out that way sometimes right. you know yeah damn yeah that's true so what when you were like doing the tour like what was some of the strategy that you were going about like you know you the, the hard part i think people don't understand it's like you just get to go on tour with uh kendrick right yep. so all right cool but you have to like build a bond with the people you work with right it's not just kendrick it's who's who's security who's this person who's the tour manager because now you're those people yeah. all are characters in your content right like for me, when I joined Q's tour, it was like, I don't know anybody here. I knew Keem, that was it. And so I'm like, all right, so I need to build relationships with these people so I can learn about each person and figure out how I can fit them into the story when you're creating. Like, what was some of your strategy about becoming friends with them or making them understand that, to, that they could be comfortable around you, capturing them in those moments? Cause yeah. you saw some shit, I'm sure, on that tour, that first tour, for a fact. Yeah, no, um, I think just being yourself, like, the more, the more you can let your guard down, the easier it is for someone else, you know, not being afraid to be ridiculous or to be uh, humiliated by, you know, at the cost <laughs> of the homies, you know, like, oh my God, homies have put me in some uh, pretty interesting, uh, funny scenarios, like uh, always clowning, but you know, whatever you gotta do to get the shot. Right. The, well, is it, did you challenge the, uh, the Les Twins? I did, in Vegas. In yes. Vegas. The dance off. Yep, it was. Uh, Top was there, and uh, shout out to Top. Um, um, Dr. Dre was there, <laughs> and twins, and Dot, of course. And then yeah, it was 
full on battle. How that shit come to be? What they were just dancing? And you just yeah, they was they was dancing, off? and then the homies just kind of egged me up. They kind of looked at me, you know. I'm I'm there with the homies, so I'm feeling even more extra, right? <laughs> Jumping off fucking couches, doing all kind of shit, and then they started like I started. I started, they started really turning up and they started doing backflips and all that kind of shit. I was like, all right, well, you guys. They over. want it? Yeah, they want Damn, it. Damn, that's fucking funny. What, I mean, what do you feel like you gained the most out of that first tour? Because since then, how many tours do you feel like you've done with Kendrick? Good Shh. kid. I'm not even sure. To be There's honest. like, you've done every tour pretty much, right? Not every tour, but uh, a good Almost amount. all of them? Yeah. Shit. Like, I feel like you're always at least in, if you're not on the whole thing, you're, you're showing up to a couple of the dates, but through all these experiences, like what do you feel like you walk away from the most that then turns you to be able to de- deal with like the way you work with clients? Cause right now I feel like every single day you're shooting with models and, and portrait photography and things like that. Right. Like that was, would that consume most of your day? You would say, uh, every day is different. You know, I could be doing a photo shoot or a music video or documenting in the studio kind of changes. Right. Yeah. So then how, how from the early days, like, of development because it's not like it, it just happens overnight like you learn a lot about i will say like what i've learned a lot from my experience has been um just work ethic yeah just being yeah being next to kendrick like you get to see how much he really works like how like very few people get to be next to someone great to see how much work it actually takes right to see how much sacrifice it takes you know when everyone else is out having a good time like you know you're there focused on the bus you know recording right um, so that's one of the things I just, you know, is it's really just less talk and just more action. Would you, what would your day be like on tour? Like how, how would you kind of move around? Like, especially at the early days, like, were you nervous to, to be able to get the right shit to be able to turn around content or was what? it? Oh my God. Yeah. I was so nervous on that first tour. I was like, yeah. <laughs> pressing your ass for content oh where's the videos oh my god (laughs) yeah i didn't have any i was like really badly organized i didn't have any idea about how to plan things out or what the hell i was shooting for i was like you know but i figured it out eventually what would you do like how'd you how'd you kind of like learn what you wanted instinct i just shoot what i feel like same way i every other photo shoot is the same way gonna make a million mood boards but i'm just literally gonna show up and shoot for my instinct Mm. like a jazz musician right that's all i know like i don't like i i don't really have a fear of like showing up anywhere in any lighting scenario with a camera and have like i know i'm gonna get the shot right um just based off of uh i don't know that's just i used to play basketball and um i have like some principles i think just off of court um that i apply to photography like what the uh, the competitive side of it with myself you know every mm. day like on tour every day trying to re outdo yourself from before you know and that's you know you're shooting the same show every night right the same movements yeah there's some things but you you know have to fight and you you find some different nuance with the show to focus in on and try to learn something every day well yeah so you go on for two years that's literally two years i'm taking almost a thousand pictures a day you know, you grow so much in that amount of time. Fuck. Would you challenge yourself? Like, like on the last tour that I did, it was like you're in a stadium or whatever every night and it's like, all right, today I'm only going to shoot on a long lens or today I'm going to just try shooting with just like a 50 or, you know what I mean? Like people will do all this different type of reposition of like. That gets to like once I get later in the tour when I know I yeah. have like everything everything i possibly get then i i start to do that and i say you know all right i'm just gonna try this for tonight or right that gets later yeah later in the tour you can start to experiment a bit yeah i feel like but i think that's kind of the best part of the tour is that's the timing like when you've done everything you normally do like this is your default settings of like production like i'm gonna produce all this content there i've covered every angle i could possibly do from with my skill set my level of like quality right and then it's like all right well, fuck, we got 45 more days left. What am I going to do to make this shit, you know, reinvent the wheel? And you start playing off of, like, shadows and you start shooting. And then some of the, like, in, most insane shit comes from those days. But you, yeah. I, I've felt, and I, you can tell me if this is true for you, like, it almost kind of puts you in a weird depression, like, uh, or I've experienced it where it's like, all right, what do I do? And I could spend a whole show bummed. And then at the last song, 
I see some crazy shit and I'm like, oh, this is it. And it, you get that one moment and because of, and I think maybe this is something that you take away from basketball, but it's like, you're on your toes, right? Like yeah. if you get really comfortable, I see a lot of people get really fucking comfortable and then they don't do shit. But like, how do you stay on your toes or how do you, how do you anticipate there, that there could be a moment, even if you feel completely like dull, is there a way that you like champion yourself to like focus on that more? Or is it just kind of like, well, I gotta be here. I'm gonna be here. I'll be ready. Does that make sense? No, okay. I, I started daydreaming honestly for this the last guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. the last twenty seconds. I'm like, saying like <laughs> if I'm on my toes, right? Yep. Then I'm I'm always ready. Yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. that's like how, you should be trained for that. But as tours go on, like Good Kid, Mad City lasted for like two years, right? Right, right. You yeah. literally were traveling around the world for fucking two years, watching the same songs play over and over again. Yeah, which is but sick. you know it's something though. Like right before every show, though, I still feel that same adrenaline though. Mm-hmm. As soon as you hear that that first song and then you hear the like crowds and all of a sudden it's like a drug and you get to like hear it and experience it you know again and um you know it's funny like some uh I, like on the championship tour uh kendrick brought me up a couple of times like to film the crowd and the energy of that experience like just feeling everyone focused in on you it's you know it's, it's power more powerful than a drug yeah it's something else yeah well, so I think that I, I use that for sure. Like, you know, it's like almost just creating another character right before I go out to, right. uh, to perform, you know? Yeah. When you, when you do, when you shoot shows, what's like your go-to setup for shooting? Like, do you have like a specific camera you prefer? Uh, this or? last tour was mostly a Mark IV with 24 to 70, uh, 70 to 200, 16 to 35 and uh, 50. Do you just do the one camera with, and then swap lenses? No, I had that camera. Then I had a Sony A7S II, I think, on the last one for yeah. a lot for video. And then I had, like, some film cameras out. And then <laughs> I had, like yeah, I had, like, way too many cameras. It was crazy. But how, 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 how do you feel, like, the pressure of, like, I feel like now, you know, there's so many kids that try to pull up on, uh, obviously, Kendrick or whoever want to shoot for them. And there's always these different people that are coming in and out trying to apply themselves to the squad. Like, how do you embrace new creatives, like, coming oh, in? Oh, it's uh, just in instinct once again. When I meet people and if they remind me of myself or if I can really see that hunger and hear someone's being genuine, I definitely put out a, a helping hand because at one point people helped me out. So I, you know, always have to, like, pay it forward and help somebody else out. All right. Yeah. What, okay, so say you get off tour, right? You yep. start developing your own relationships with other people. There's probably mad people that are starting to fucking look at you now. Obviously, you're doing all this work and people are recognizing the name to Kendrick and you build notoriety. notoriety. What do you do like on when you're not traveling? Like you come to LA, you start moving into LA. Do you find a spot for yourself or what? what's the next yeah, move? Yeah. yeah, I have like a studio space here and... Um uh, being back in, be, being back off the road, I'm shooting more portraits and album covers and fashion editorials and current. Yeah, yeah. but I'm saying like off the say off that first two years, like you oh. do the two year run because I oh, remember when I met you, you're like, yeah, bro, yeah. I'd come back and I'd be sleeping on at Red's house on the floor for a second, and then we hit the road again. We're in a in a fucking suite or some shit, like you know what I mean. And it was just yeah. that's the grind is like back and forth. It's almost like you don't even have time to like figure out your life here because then the next thing you know you're on the road again yeah you know it didn't I mean? even make sense to figure it out because barely we're here you know i was here um, a weekend a month or something did they ever have a conversation with you like yo you you just be with us like you you're the guy like just playing on that for a long time <laughs> you know what i mean or is it just no, kind of like that or is it unspoken yeah it was just yeah. unspoken so yeah. then what do you do like in the earlier years like what did you do coming off of it when you did have gaps of time and you're like all right so i said do i settle down here because you're like you're right it is complicated you know what i mean to figure it out but for sure yeah i kind of settled and kind of started start that momentum back up again on the freelance side you know then i then i'm hitting my uh, former clients up that i worked with before tour and and building new relationships and mostly everything is just word of mouth you know? yeah I go crazy posting on Instagram and then business comes and then I like disappear for like two months and then I like, oh. Go crazy again. Time to go crazy. Yeah, and I go right. crazy with like 10 posts a day for like four or five days and then disappear again. That is fucking true. You be flooding my shit. Yeah. I just, yeah I got vampire it. gone <laughs> out. Let's see ya. Is it, I feel like what's dope is that it's, it's constantly evolving and the way you like the way you, I don't know, the black and white shit is a whole nother, you know, man, that's you, right? Like you've just conquered that shit. But then when you you do so many black and whites and you come with color and your colors just have a certain tone to it that just, it, it's like 
part of your brand. Does that yeah. make sense? No, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Yeah, the color I love, like hypersaturated, like almost like the opposite end of the black and white. Yeah. Um, the reds, the blues, the way they pop, it's like so, I don't know, it just feels like very tangible and shit. And you do like this crazy infrared looking thingy. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, the blood negative. Yeah, that's what I've been working on lately. So when you, you know, you start building your clients, like I know Kelly Rowland, like when we did, when I did Coachella would be, you were there, which yep. is tight because I, we had no other people shooting except for you, which yeah. was like the most rare shit ever. But was, and then you're like, you're like, yeah, I'm shooting this B thing. I'm like, nah, dude, I don't think they're gonna let you in the pit. You're like, no, I'm with Kelly. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy experience because I, I was having like headaches. And yeah, then I'm there uh, with. Uh, I was having this weird pressure from like flights. I don't even know, but I'm there sitting on the couch, and I'm like up for two days because I'm like I think I was like coming off tour and then doing this. And then uh, Jay comes over, uh, Jay Z like comes over. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'm Sean." Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh, what's up, man? That's tight." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Cool, yeah, I know who you are." And then he's like, "Man, you doing all right?" I was like, "Man, I was having like a little headache right now, kind of tired." And he's like, "Man, go ahead and take a nap, right?" I'm like, "What? Yeah, you just know? sleep right here, boy." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right. Oh man, so wild. That's just crazy. But how you had met? When did you meet Kelly? Because that I mean, you had worked with her prior to shooting Coachella, obviously. Yep, yep. Very good friend of mine, uh, Jim Bowie. She plugged us up together and uh, got us working. Because the photos you guys have together are fucking ill as shit. And then uh, um, it was cool because she was like, I remember I was in the backstage or whatever. I saw her. I was like, Hey, Chris is here somewhere. She's like, Oh, Chris is here. And she was ecstatic. I was like, Yeah, he's I, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. Me? Yeah, yeah. I love love working with her. She uh, retweeted this thing I posted uh, a while back and. I think it helped it go viral and the next thing i know i'm on the cover of fucking buzzfeed like their main shit i was like oh god and it's like kelly roller uh, like when we got snubbed on the emmys or some shit i was like fuck that shit's crazy bro it's like really when you sit back and think about it like being from florida to imagine yourself to where you are now who you work with and how you stay so steady with this shit like could you see this coming oh yeah i've lived it already in my head, like I, uh, the my like the way I, I really believe in the power of manifestation, and mm -hmm. I test drive like everything in the future already. Like I used to have conversations with Kendrick on the tour bus before I like even went on tour with him. I would go and literally put picture myself on the tour bus and you know visualize it, or you know anyone else, or or you know I really think about it going to the future and in some kind of way it manifests. Do you ever run into people like? especially out in LA, it's like you run into someone and you see them on the streets and shit and then you're like, oh man, I bet I bump into that person again and when I do, it'll be on some French shit. And then it fucking, ha like, I feel like that shit is very common out here and I don't know if that's manifestation or if that's just like uh, having an objective, I guess, because it's like, I feel like so so many times, like I never imagined I would work with TDE, you know what I mean? Yeah. But as soon as there was a slight hint of it, like, and it still felt really far away, like my whole schoolboy cute thing was like, very far away when it first happened no one knew me it was through a person through a person to musa and then that little bit of it that's did the same thing to me where i'm like oh that's all i needed to now realize that i'm good enough to be able to do that if not i'm better than i'm better than good like i'm gonna be way better than anything that they could imagine i'm gonna do right now if i get the chance and somehow eventually that shit like rolls onto your lap and i feel like that happens i don't know kind of often like it's not like i thought i work with beyonce but as soon as something kind of came near it i'm like oh i could do that but yeah. I, I don't know if i ever imagined i could do that shit mm. when i was in iowa or that it's possible i feel like that's defeating for people like you don't really understand that any like literally it's so dumb to say that shit anything is possible you know what i mean but for real it is yeah no it is yeah for sure it'd be funny if you told jay like if you introduce yourself as bob's photographer <laughs> Jay's like, hey man, what's up? I'm Sean. I'm, like, I'm B.O.B. photographer. <laughs> you just blank out so hard because it's Jay. What else? Uh, I mean, fuck, bro. It's like you're too humble with this shit. Nah, I mean, that's. Nah, you're too humble. It's like you had a crazy journey, bro. Like, this shit is really wild to think about that shit and how moving it is to think of, like, to literally be on the end of the line. You know what I mean? Like, the your last straw. You probably had no money, all this shit to literally, like, traveling the entire planet with one of the biggest rappers in the world you know what i mean like yeah that's, you know it's crazy I, I i really reflected this year when i first started i remember this first show i really wanted to shoot in tallahassee florida i was um 
I heard it was a, a concert with T Pain. He was like from Tallahassee, and uh, shout out to T Pain. Yeah, I like him. Um, I used to. I used to uh, do graphic design for a guy at Marco Mall, and I'd be doing these flyers, and I'd go to his house, and Payne would be in the living room making beats. Really? And I'd be in the back room, whatever, like, meeting with Mar Marco. He had, like, an office there, and he'd be like, you know, da, da, da. He's like, yo, that Payne, yo, he's going to be crazy. And I'm like, yo, whatever. I was like, let me get my money and get out of here. <laughs> and then, yo, he started buzzing, and, uh, you know, the rest was history. Damn. But anyways, this show, this uh, first show, he comes back, and... Uh, I, I met him before he like really blew up and I wanted to shoot him but once he that happened he changed his number we lost contact so this first big show back I uh, I'm in the some kind of way I snuck into the back but you still needed a pass to to shoot in the pit and right. I saw Ju Julia Beverly from Ozone magazine I never met her before but I knew who she was and I went to her I was like hey uh, you don't know who I am but I'm really dope and I'll give you like free <laughs> photos and I, I just need a photo pass and then she like looks she's looking at me as i talking and she just looks straight ahead reaches in her pocket grabs me a pass hands me the pass boom i'm like all right got through door number two so now i go inside and then i go into the arena emptied out and pain is up there on this piano and i'm like hey yo bro you mind if i take a picture and then i was uh i'm probably rambling right now no please but um this is before this is before kendrick shit or after no, yeah, this is way way before yeah. okay this wait is, yeah this is like what started me to want to work with celebrities right i um i you know i was like yo i i, I met you before da, da, da. i want to do a shoot with you and uh he told me it's like yo chris it's like yeah i remember who you are and he hooks me up with his manager to like do a shoot but that never follows through and then i can remember at this time uh going to shoot like at a club and an artist was uh, finished performing. He's like sitting in his car in the back seat, and I'm trying to like, I just like wanted to take one photo, and he just like, I won't say the artist's name, but he just kept looking straight ahead, like didn't wasn't even, having it. Did, did not acknowledge me, and stuff like that is like, I'm so competitive. I was like, I'm gonna fucking make you, fucking want my photo yeah, one right. fucking day. Yeah, I guarantee you. Um, and so, yeah, that that after that, I just made like a target list in my head of all the. I made like. 10 impossible celebrities to work with in, within the year like because i watched the secret around this time and then mm -hmm. at, by the end of the year i think i checked off like nine of those 10. It, was it who, who okay so who were the top three from the list jay-z uh who i i worked with i designed his myspace page when myspace really? was super booming damn and rihanna and uh, rock nation and snoop and pain uh fuck exhibit he's like one of my first like big shoots uh oh another all right i got another funny so i'm just going to give you a couple of random anecdotes real fast please do first photo shoot where i shot like a uh, for a magazine um it was for uh young jeezy and it was i was not like i sucked at this time <laughs> i shot i shot jeezy with fucking clamp lights i'm talking about like yeah the, like the fucking uh home depot ones yeah home oh my god it was terrible but i did tell him that day i was like i'm not sure when but i'm gonna see you again and the next time i saw him was maybe about a year ago i was in his house photographing him in the studio and i was like full circle moment i was like I, I knew we would like Reca paths yeah. would cross again you know did he remember you or did you bring it no, up of course not yeah, yeah. it's like hey i did that at shitty shoes i did yeah. a million shitty shoes man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> damn that's hey shout out uh, side note the coffee is really a uh, black with no cream over here yeah that's facts uh i don't even have i mean i'm cool to give you some creamy coffee or whatever Can I get more sir yeah do you want another one we we got the little thing over there um that's just funny what up creators? I want to remind you about our community at jointhehomies.com. The homies are the squad of legends who support what we do here at Black Window Cream so we can continue to build this platform into the best educational space for content creators on earth. And in return for that support, we give you a bunch of sick perks all month long like access to our live stream tutorials and hangouts, bonus podcast episodes, and so much more. Check us out at jointhehomies.com. Let's go! Damn. I feel... I I wish I would have made a list. That'd been dope. I don't know what I what my plan was when I moved. Out. I was terrified. Hmm. It was just um, Musa being like, "Yeah, he's dope. We are gonna bring him on tour, change his life." 
<laughs> and I was like, for real? Like, I'm back in Iowa. Like, I won the fucking lottery. I'm like, I'm going on this world tour. TDE, Kendrick, Q. Like, oh my God, my life's changed. And then nothing happens for like a year or some shit. And I was just like waiting with my bags packed. You know what I mean? But yeah. then to me, it was like, I, if I move to LA, when I get there, I'm just going to either see if that's still a thing. But my main thing was like, I just want Musa to remember I was some, whatever he thought I was tight before. I want him to remember that shit. Cause I'm like, there's mad people that deserve these spots. You know what I mean? Like if you really think about this shit, it's really crazy that like how you said earlier, like we're in these rooms with these people, we have these conversations that we're a part of. And like, it's really wild to think like there's 7 billion people on earth, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. 7 billion, bro. You and me were one of four, five people shooting Coachella. Well, that's not true. I was part of the camera crew and then we had like our photographers, but we only had three photographers. You were one of them that got to shoot. That's crazy out of like, that's a historical moment. Oh, segue back to that story with Julia Beverly where she gave me the pass. I segue to that where I had to, I remember my first show not being able to get a pass to now being out with Kendrick and being like mostly pretty much the only photographer to be able to shoot for this entire damn tour. Right. Um, It's, uh, that's just crazy, you know. Did but you, things happen so fast a lot of the time that you really don't have a time to check in and really experience it fully. I know. You know. There's moments where I really try to like, the moments I remember are the moments where I didn't have a camera. Cause you know, when you have the camera, obviously I'm recording it, but you're not really fully, it's like I'm almost numb when I have that camera. Mm. Yeah, cause it's always on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're focused on that shit. The times where you, and it's also like deciding when to, should I record this shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's always a question in, in every every stance because you're like, all right, if I turn this shit on, is it gonna blow? Is it gonna fuck up the vibe? Exactly. Yeah. Is this for me? You know what I mean? Because you have to decide. Like, is it is this moment for me or is this moment for? Yeah. You know, for history, really is what you have to look at it like. Damn, that's always funny. But I think that you always kind of like learn with the artists. Like they can kind of give you the bad signal. Of like, nah, you don't need this one or for sure. Yeah, you have to be very on. aware. I think shooting or documenting the artists, just aware of your energy, like learning how to like almost make your energy like clear. Mm. Like my energy should never disrupt the artist's in energy. You know, I should almost be invisible when I need to be. And then when you're a part of the moment, then you're a part of the right. moment. And right. Another photographer did tell me, cause I, I used to be like kind of, creepy I think when I first came around because I was just literally <laughs> shooting non-stop I just was so like excited yeah but uh this photographer told me he's like uh don't be afraid to miss some of the good shots to get the great ones damn and sometimes you got to put the camera down and actually be a human being and talk to people and you know so they can feel comfortable cause right there's a fucking camera in their face you know yeah. how, how do you feel you know it's not really the you know well and then people like they'll play they'll play their character sometimes when they they might not even know they're playing a character, but sometimes they do when the camera turns on, they start kind of like cooling out and doing this shit and then you lose that moment, right? Yeah. So by having done that, that's a great tip. Fuck, that's a great tip. Yeah, it's like a dance, you know, like, cause it's really hard to, you only get that one moment to get that one shot they didn't notice. Cause after you take that shot, they're always gonna, so it's like- They hear it. You gotta like reset. You gotta put the camera down for like two or three more hours and you play this game again. Like, oh, shit, <laughs> you forgot the cameras up. Boom, now I just stole another moment. That's you know? so true. How do you how do you adapt to like the scheduling? Like I love it because uh, um, I'm a Gemini, so I'm like all over the place. Right. I, I love all the new uh, places and traveling, but sometimes it's uh, it can be tough with the schedule. You know, if you're not taking care of your body, not eating right, right. If you're drinking or smoking or stuff like that, it's you know you're not gonna be able to bounce back and survive do you try on tour. Do you have any like? Uh, have you tried to like focus on that on like the last tour that you did or anything like when you traveled? Ah, uh, you know, I kind of tried. You know, I did my best. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting a lot, and it was like, man, put that camera down and work out. And then, yeah, you know, so. and then all of a sudden, fucking like wings pull up at the on the bus, and you just smash like fifty of them. You're just like, oh fuck, <laughs> dude. It's like the hardest thing though. Like, and and it's always like we're moving. Like on my last tour, we we would try to like get the gym. Um, I'd never done that before. On Q's tour, I gained like 30 pounds. Like for real. I came home and lost 30 pounds cycling, fucking riding bikes. Yeah. But you just eat a million PB&Js or whatever else is on the ride or like fucking Lunchables and shit. And then all of a sudden you're completely unhealthy. But I feel like there's got, we got to like create some sort of training camp 
that people can do on the road, like some. Uh, I was just thinking about that. I was picturing it yesterday, like a boot camp for being. On yeah, the like Tybo. Uh, Ty, what is that guy? Tybo workout tapes or some shit. Just like my mom would be like, huh. <laughs> yeah, except for you like swiveling C stands. Like, yeah, yeah. Just fucking lifting up tripods and fucking changing batteries. Pop, yeah. like swap these batteries. <clears throat> just practicing, saying that. Nah, that's the dumbest shit ever. Yeah, I was, I was that's like, stop. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Was it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. For you, for you, like as you grow, what what is like the biggest hurdle you've had to jump in your opinion like uh, the easy answer uh, managing myself yeah that's probably the biggest like i'm so far in the and i've been so far in the art side and the creative side that the business side you know suffered because of that you know because of that i'm not as organized as i should have been you know facilitating when you're trying to like deal with clients and pricing and right you know getting your accounts back it's too much like you got to have a team at some point you got to add in more people that you trust and be able to trust your instincts fast enough you know to trust you chose the right person right and then you just got to go for it because it makes your life a lot easier how did you start learning that like um especially like when it comes down to pricing everybody that listens to this shit's always like oh what should i charge for this oh my god yeah lots and lots of mistakes but uh someone told me this though that helped me out just always ask what's the budget yes that's like the ask that question because everyone always has like a ballpark budget and you know honestly all my <laughs> my projects are really kind of one-offs like they're more kind of like you know it's not really like cookie cutter stuff that i'm trying to do so right i kind of go in reverse yeah okay that makes sense was it is it like right now what who's who's like your main client like when you shoot like the models and shit is that for publications or what what are you shooting for like when you do shoot these models aside from artistic bounds how do you make money off that shit um honestly <coughs> most of it right now has been uh experiments and practice but uh, eventually I'll, a, a lot of it's going to become part of uh, photo books hmm. which would be the next chapter you know i want to go into and really like self public self what is this shit called? Um, may, maybe some may be self-published. It may go through a publisher. I'm not really sure yet, but that'd be dope. Yeah, I'm gonna drop drop a couple of pieces, like with the, <clears throat> like my black and white portraits. Uh, probably a series on the the red ultraviolet stuff that you mm -hmm. saw on Instagram. That's probably gonna become its own like gallery and series and merch. So I got a lot planned for t uh, 2020. Have you done a gallery before? Uh, I've done a couple of here and there, but uh, nothing like I'm about to do. I feel like it's to do a gallery is probably just takes up front funding right like you have to get all the shit printed and it's pretty intense lifts right uh it just depends on how how intense you want to go right you can go more diy and save a lot of money or you can spend a make lot. the shit look crazy yeah. right damn that's gonna be tight we should do a black window cream uh chris parsons gallery. yo that would be hard i know because that's what i want to do in 2020 is do way more like physical shit like you know what i mean and i think that could be really really tight yeah Ooh, we gotta talk after this shit yeah i think that'd be awesome i think like what's I'm dropping the ep too like for music I got like five songs are you being for real yeah probably get you to do a music video or something it's all good i want something with that 360 shit that shit was <laughs> lit <laughs> what what what's the EP? all right go into detail on this shit ep what do you mean what, what's the songs i can't really go into you know a lot of details, rap but. rap shit uh, it's gonna be a little rap, a little singing. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. just uh, you know regular life shit. Have you ever done that before though? No, you never put out music. Nope. But you dance and you're musical. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I can you know do something. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy, I can do so. Don't worry. The coffee it. is starting to. Whoa, we got some cream. This Wake time? you ass up. Nah, it's just like some frothy shit at the top. I don't know what it is. If it's really uh, cream, but um, damn, it's not. an EP. My guy about to drop it on his MySpace. <clears throat> have you have you reactivated your, your MySpace? I got one when they made the 2.0 plug thing. I don't think I did. It was tight. I wanted to see if it had all my old messages with me talking to all these like emo girls and did just they? like, oh, I'm so sad. No, I can't figure out how to do it. Uh, they gotta have that shit though. It's for real. Gold if I can see my old conversations like that. Fuck spelling things wrong, being hilarious. This guy. <laughs> I feel like it, the, the the best part about this shit is how I'm dead ass you're being mad humble with your work. But like you saying that this, if you go to your Instagram feed and start scrolling and you're saying a lot of this shit is just exper for the experiment, like yeah, practice. A lot of my, uh, my Instagram feed, you can kind of see where I'm at in life. 
Mm. When you start to see like uh, a lot of like back to back black and white, it's kind of like I'm at a prior place in life where I'm feeling kind of lost. Mm. And then I kind of like recalibrate myself with the black and white. And then every time I recalibrate myself, I kind of take a little bit more of the experiences from before and dive back into it, go into isolation, a lot of sol solitude. That's where I kind of like recharge and come back up. And then, <clears throat> then I go back into color and go experiment with that again. When you said like before, you feel like it's easy to like disconnect, like you, you don't realize like how much shit's happened to you in this time, right? Like to actually sit back and be like, damn, that's crazy to think that she gave me the, the photo pass and now I can go to any photo, like it's all mine. Yeah. Like to think about that shit. I feel like the way you just described the way your photos resonate with you, you've been able to kind of look at it from a God's view, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, did it take a while to get there? Because it's like, now you're looking at like, yeah, if it's black and white, I'm kind of like feeling like this, like to really understand that is, is its own art. Because a lot of us be making shit and you don't even, like, you don't know where you're at. You don't know what's going on. And you're just making things to make things or like, I'll get crazy if I'm not making stuff that's not just for clients you know what yeah, I mean? like same yeah and you forget that that's even possible after a while you do so much client shit you're like oh i could go outside and film something right now i yeah. could go make some shit with my friends or go shoot something for a new artist who doesn't know they need a music video yet or whatever like did it take a while for you to kind of adapt to that because like you might not reflect on your own thing but you were reflecting on your moods and your work which is really unique yeah I don't know. I think I, I, when I was younger, I used to have a problem with my emotions. Like I was always like too emotional. And then I realized it was my strength and being able to tap into emotions. I'm very aware and sensitive to that. So I can, it, it helps me in my portraiture. Right. Just being able to relate to people, make them feel comfortable and almost uh, that magic trick of forgetting that the camera's there. Mm. That's tight. Is it a, uh, you got your new studio space, right? So you got, you moved into that top of the year? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which, did you have your own studio before that or were you just renting studios? No, I had my own studio space before that, like kind of in the middle of the downtown. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you like shooting down there or having downtown access? I feel like oh, yeah, all the studio spaces are sick, right? Yeah, yeah, I love, yeah, I love shooting downtown, but I love where I'm at now, kind of away from it and uh, tucked away. It's cool. So what made you make the move to this new space? Was it like more space or was it like just like a different environment? For yeah, you? just a different environment. Felt like a new chapter was uh, around the corner and just wanted something new. So what would you say is like the main stuff? Like how much of the, like percentage wise of your feed is coming from studio space? Cause you shoot outside a lot. Yeah. But is a lot of this like the dark, dark black and whites and moody shit, is that from your space? Studio, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yep, yep. Damn. Yeah, anything like the c concrete walls and all the like studio stuff, yeah, that's at my place. How important is it to have your own like war room like your own space oh my god and it's uh it's one of the most important things to be able to have your sanctuary where you can go and work and create without being disturbed uh you know that you can be in control of the energy of the space and you know you can i'm a creature i have it so i love shooting in the same places with people wearing the same things over and over and over again i mm. went to catholic school and i wear uniforms every day me too so i think a part of that still comes back into my work but when you show everyone in the same place wearing the same thing, you really get to see the differences. Yeah. Because each one brings something different, you know. They right. inspire. We, uh, when we, you know, when I, whenever I'm working with someone, it's just like I say, like a dance between power and vulnerability. Mm. You know, uh, in the beginning, I like to be the one that's more vulnerable and make the other person feel more powerful. And then towards the end, that dance switches where, you know, now they become more vulnerable and I become more powerful. It's right. Just, Damn, it's so interesting. Yeah, and a lot of psychology goes into it. You know, uh, the lighting, the sense, like everything goes into play. I'm sensitive to all that, all at once. Is it uh, when you when you're finding like um, the different models that you use? What like the way you did it outside, where you just randomly walked up to this person? How is that? How you find a lot of people if you're just out in public or do you no? Reach it's out different internet? ways. It's like through agencies, it's uh, through Instagram. I might just see someone I want to shoot, or a lot of times just walk in the street. You know, right. I, I like shooting just everyday normal people at the same time. You know, everywhere you go, you will you bring your camera on you? Not everywhere, no, no, no. I want to practice that more. Like I feel like I'm not. Like it'd be cool to have my camera on me versus just taking phone photos and being bummed that it was just, on, just yeah. on my iPhone or some shit. Yeah, I think I went too far in the other extreme and I had the camera on me too much and now it's like, all right, a little burnt exhausted. out. Got to like... Right, pump the brakes. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's crazy when uh, 
just to like relive this shit and then know like what you've accomplished and like bro you shot kendrick lamar for years like just that by itself is like iconic as fuck you know what i mean and that shit will only become more iconic you could quit photography tomorrow and somehow you're gonna get blown up in 10 years from now when everyone decides to relive it of 50 years from now in a hundred years like we're creating the shit that's gonna go in these history books like whatever the fucking it's probably not a book but like whatever some website that they create for schools some shit like they'll be reliving this stuff that you capture right now you know what i mean yeah that's fucking crazy yeah it is and it's uh I tried my hardest for uh, myself not to actually feel that and not to experience that and to just stay as close to that self that just when I was in Tallahassee and really wanted that uh, that past, you know, I try to stay as close to that kid as possible. Right. Damn, man. Oh. Never like letting me, you know, my family never lets my head get too big anyways. You know, my sister, she always clown me if I ever like, she calls me Hollywood. like. <laughs> the ego gets ego out of control much. it can sometimes <laughs> yeah don't be surprised when you when you go back home is it um like do your friends from like high school and shit do people go crazy the fact that you've like done so much since then yeah but they just treat me like chris when i go back home you right know? um you know everyone's proud of me obviously but i still get to just you know do your thing yeah right um all right i want to do so we do a q a thing uh where it's a Q&A experience, so I let my, my Patreon people ask you questions. Um, so I'm going to blast through these. You can answer them, take your time, or answer them quick. All right, cool. So Jason says, how has your uh, artistic experience unraveled? Have you done video projects? Oh, yeah, let's talk about video, bro. Yeah. You like you want to direct more like music video stuff, too, and like taking it in that route campaign-wise, too. Like You always do really, really interesting like art pieces yeah. with like models and different experimental type content i love that shit yeah so for like, sure definitely i want to uh hit more in that lane and uh doing more like fashion films uh and short narratives i want to start shooting these like kind of uh short scenes they may be like one minute two minutes i'm just gonna start shooting them on my, on my mark four find some cool audio and just fucking start you know start where i'm at i want to eventually shoot movies i've always wanted to shoot films yeah so i'm just gonna start there and you know just see where it goes what's been some of your favorite like video content you made out of out of Let's talk about, let's do this. Favorite photo content you've ever shot in your whole career? Fuck. And favorite video content you've ever shot or, more, or most proud of or most iconic to you personally? Hmm. Let's see. He's thinking, everybody. We should put the Jeopardy music on right now. Probably can't, but that would be <laughs> No, I'll get flagged. Yeah. <laughs> Just put my new mixtape on. Right yeah, there now. we go. Just start bumping it. Just put like just... some big text right here. Yeah. Like pumping Download this now. Dadpiff.com. Yeah. Damn. Hold on. Let me just really think He's about thinking this. about it. I have millions of millions of photographs, but uh, a couple are coming to me right now. Let me just think for a second. While he's thinking. All right. Let me come back to that question. Yeah, we're going to do it because I think we go, we'll hit a couple other ones. We can come back to it. So Dane says... Uh, Damn, I gotta f I'm trying to like pre-read these in a second. Uh, what's the one thing that has improved your workflow, whether it was decreasing time or creating better results? Decreasing time or creating better results? I don't know what he means, but what's what's been like a workflow uh, tweak that you've made on your life that's helped you adapt to like staying on top of shit? Gosh, I really think uh, being realistic with uh, organizing the right amount of time for projects and not putting in too much on my plate. Mm. That. Um, that in itself is starting to really help things and you know everything moves smoother right um, neutral PV says is there anything in the industry that almost made you give up at some point if so what was it that kept you going I know we hit on that at the beginning but it wasn't like you were trying to give up you were trying to figure it out hmm we always t I always like to get into like creative depression too because I feel like a lot everyone yeah we all deal with this shit right has there been a form of that for you where you're kind of like looking at oh, yourself? Oh, for like, sure. Fuck. Yeah, there are moments when I'm usually, if I'm burned out and tired or frustrated, yeah, I've had those moments for sure where I'm, I question and then uh, the next day I go do a photo shoot and I get inspired and then I'm back at it again. But yeah, I still go through those those bouts for sure. Do you ever try to do anything like um, stepping away for a while? Like specifically, like you just said, I try, I, I don't bring my camera with me as often because I burn myself out. But Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's necessary. You have to like, 
really unplug, probably go crazy binging on Netflix, mm-hmm. eat some really good food, sleep, and just run away from my phone. Right, and reset. Yeah. Um, let's see, Mellow Min, Mellow Min? I don't know. As a concert photographer, there are a lot of instabilities. What are some of the things um, you've imp- implemented within your life and your work routine in order to build stability? I, you know, just being able to have multiple ways of uh, creating, you know, not just shooting on tour, you know, coming back, being able to shoot album covers or music right. videos or, you know, shoot something for a fashion brand. Just being real diverse, I guess, with what, what's possible. Right. Um, Adam says, how do you bring up contracts so you don't get taken advantage of? Any, t- any tips on contracts? Oh, uh, yeah. Just say, hey, yo, I got a contract. Let's, let's send it over. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever provide contracts on your end? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. It's... I think that's the other thing is like people don't like the idea that they have to spend money to have like a lawyer draft something up because they're like, oh, fuck, then I don't really make that much money after that. Yeah, no, it's worth it. It's so worth it. Um, All right, cool. Let's do like one more. Um, I remember when you're putting out more video content, Good Kid Mad City, tour vlog, surprise, Jay-Z reverse reveal. Oh, you shot that shit in the studio? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to cry when I watched that video. I was like, that's (laughs) iconic. Like, can you imagine? That shit was hard. Uh, do you have any plans on doing more video work in the future? Yeah. Video or photo? Like, you just like to do a variety of that as long as you can be expressive? Is that kind of like your thing? Yeah, I'm just an artist at the end of the day. Like, mm-hmm. it's uh, just depending upon which paintbrush I want to use that day. Right. I feel that. All right, so wrapping it up, what was the last? Let's go back to the question I asked before. If, if you looked at it, out of all your photo content, all your video moments, could you pick any of them? It doesn't have to be the most illest shit. Here, let me do a little 30 second scroll right here. So he's going to start swiping through IG. Thanks for listening. Whoever's listening to this right now. Appreciate you. If you haven't followed Chris yet, you should follow him at Parsons. Was that easy to get that Instagram handle? At Parsons? Yeah, just Parsons. I feel like it's hard to get like one word Instagrams. Oh, it's pretty easy to be honest. All right. Just uh, started pretty early true that's facts dude even the close i feel like it's not over yet i feel like there's a better question man i feel like there's gonna be one more question what the podcast you want me to ask another one before you answer this one oh you're saying that's the end of it no 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 it's still going just a little longer if we can keep talking i think keep talking a little longer i feel like he's still he's like i gotta think of the moment no i just got like another win with this like coffee now oh you're good all right cool all right cool 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 let's do it i like it if you when you're working with a brand how do you deal with um like (sighs) suits bro like how do you deal with fucking creative criticism man that shit gives me anxiety like like you have no idea like and i can feel it in my chest when i'm about to when it's about to happen i'm like oh shit i like it but i think maybe ah and you should try this or maybe let's flip this to that and like whoa no 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 and then uh, then it goes back to where you originally started at right how do i deal with it um because you 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 know you owe them because they pay you to do something specific you know in some cases and no i've learned that at some point you have to have the confidence to be able to speak up and give your artistic viewpoint because they're hiring you because you have a particular you know i right. i someone coming to me they have a, you know they're coming to me because they like a particular darker aesthetic you know mm. so uh you know i may say it with all due respect you know i then i give my part you know this is what i think it should be and right usually i'm pretty good at convincing and you have to be kind of a salesman you know yeah. you got to be a real janky promoter in these streets it's to, so true as a photographer and director you know you're you're manipulating people with your camera every day you know making them feel comfortable hmm. you know jedi mind tricks to get this like you know you know image from this like uh you know legends right you know i i photograph i get to i'm really blessed to be able to photograph like legends you know and be in these rooms and hear these conversations and you know see how you know people move you know and it's i'm even in awe sometimes like how does a person like even i remember when kendrick got his first uh accepted as or all the grammy nominations came out for good kid mad city right and we're in europe and at this point um i remember ali couldn't be out there as an engineer shouts out to ali Mm -hmm. um so they, I, I kind of learned Pro Tools a little bit just to kind of record. So I'm like in the back <laughs> recording the, um, recording them, and I'm like, I was like, hey, bro, uh, this is after he performed the show, by the way. I'm like, bro, uh, you know you just like got a gazillion uh, Grammy nominations. Like you probably could take a night off, and he's like, 
no, bro, like, I can't let this shit touch me. Like, I got to keep going. And, and seeing that, it's like, you know, it's just that tenacious, almost like an athlete, you know, never being uh, satisfied. Never being satisfied. And it rubbed off onto me. I was already kind of like that way, but being around them even more and being around TDE, it's just like a different mindset that you right. got to have. And, you know, not everyone is is built like that you know you got to know when you come into a camp as a photographer it's a whole it's a culture that you have to be a part of and you want to pick that culture that is going to be best suited for you right you know? right tde may not be best suited for someone else you know you may not be able to, to handle the the clowning the, the getting clowned <laughs> on like you have no idea the the types of embarrassing situations but being able to also take your ego out of it and just right. say you know what what the hell who cares like yeah. everybody's laughing <clears throat> fuck it and then you yeah. learn you can joke back. Yeah, you, I know. That's you, what I was just going to say. As soon as you learn that you can bite back, you're good. Yeah. Walk in, I'll be like, shut the fuck up. Like, what? dude, they'll, they'll eat. Man, I got called Peyton Manning right after the first night after I woke up on the bus. My hair was all fucked up. And Q's like, damn, you look like Peyton Manning. And I was like, fuck. And then everyone's like, ah, he does look like he is Peyton Manning. All that shit. And then, uh, Smack was like fucking high as shit one day. <laughs> Dog, this shit's so funny. He's high as hell. And, and then we're, it was a totally another day, right? And we're just sitting there, and Q's like, shut up, Peyton Manning. And then Smack's like, man, you really look like Patty Manning. And he said the name way wrong. And then that became the new name. And because we all started dying at him because he couldn't even say Peyton Manning. <laughs> we're all just cracking up laughing like, fuck. But no, it really is like that. I, I think being with those dudes, it, it'll set you straight on, like, understanding that, like, nothing's like super serious like i i remember going into the tour thinking like this shit's about to be real serious these are these are fucking crips and shit fuck like this shit's gonna be some real deal shit and we get in there everyone's joking around and fucking honestly it's just it's ass backwards to what i thought it was gonna be and then you realize it's fun but then to be inspired by that shit because q i remember q came in and told me uh because i hadn't heard of that um the secret mm. did you read the book or watch the doc I watched the doc first yeah. and then read the book. Yeah. So I hadn't heard of it. And we were like, I remember we were in Germany or somewhere and we were, it was like one late night on the bus and Q came down and we were just started talking about some shit. And he's like, he's like me and Kendrick, we watched that shit or we read it or whatever. And we would sit in the Carson house, like sleeping on the fucking couch and like literally just like imagine winning awards. Imagine playing these shows. Like yeah. I, he's like, I had this shit on my walls. I would put everything there so I could stay focused. And I remember hearing that shit like, fuck. He's like, you have to imagine it. He's like, cause he, that was the same night he won. He got nominated for Grammys. And wow. I remember us talking I'm like, bro, you're Grammys. You, are you Grammy nominated? He's like, I already knew I, like that's not surprising me. I already imagined being Grammy nominated. I'm like, fuck. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't, it's, that's nothing new to me. It's just another day. Like I was already supposed to get this shit. Like that shit changed the way I thought about everything. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh fuck. I gotta go at it in a completely different way. Like we're supposed to do this shit. We're supposed to be able to see these things because we work hard as fuck. You know what I mean? If you, I mean, we're supposed to if you work hard for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Work ethic is everything in this shit. Cause I feel like I see too many people pull up and they're just like fucking bum me. Like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people want it served to them on a platter. Like, oh, here. No. Yeah, like, yeah, I think I came up in the era, like, before Instagram, before social media, where, you know, you really had to go and work on them being a, a print. Speaking of which, like, being an apprentice under a photographer. When, yeah. I, when I used to live in New York, I used to um, always want to work with Jonathan Mannion. And I would like call his uh, studio and I like ask to talk to him and you know, obviously he wasn't available, <laughs> but I'd be like, hey, um, you guys like, you know, have any room for interns and never would. So then I started uh, going staking out his studio space. I found the address some kind of way and I would just kind of, this hey, fucker guy. anything yeah, <laughs> to hey. get through, bro. But Hello, <laughs> is anyone in here? Yeah, I came in there with a gun and, uh, uh, you know, some of that stuff that makes people fall asleep when you put the rag up to their face, and he gave me a job. <laughs> yeah, but no, fast forward, though, maybe uh, uh, maybe a year later, um, I'm at South by Southwest, and I'm with Kendrick, and then in the, the hallway is, like, Pharrell and Jonathan Mannion. Whoa. And I walk over to Pharrell, and I'm like, uh, hey, uh, excuse me, bro, uh, one second. And I'm like, yo, you're Jonathan Mannion? <laughs> I'm like, what like the pushed fuck? For, uh, yeah, I like <laughs> totally was like, hey, bro, you're tight, bro. Yo, you're Jonathan fucking Mayan. And now he's like a big bro. Like, you know, I can. That's tight. 
you know, talk to them. And whenever I'm going through, you know, or trying to figure anything out, it helps to, to have mentors in this game. Absolutely. For sure. Nah, People for sure. Who, you know, I think uh, I tried to do things the hard way. You know, I tried to, I had a lot of pride and wanted to make it. Like, I just like, oh, I want to show everybody, you know, you should get mentors. You know, should uh, the smartest thing to do is just go intern under a master. You know, the person right. that you really love your their work there, there's nothing like just going and working for them or being right. able to experience that. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I saw this, I'm not, I'm sure you've seen it like the advertisements for uh, Annie Leibovitz uh, uh, masterclass. No, I haven't seen that. Well, she, yeah, she did like this uh, masterclass series and I, I was in New York and I was like, damn, I really want to take her masterclass. And I was like looking, I was like, all right, I'm going to get it tomorrow. Um, I remember, uh, you know, Rhett was like, yo, you got a, a dot has a shoot, whatever. And it was with Vanity Fair, but didn't realize I would be actually on set with Andy Leibovitz. What? The next day? Yeah, literally the next day, bro. I'm like, I want to do the master class. Like, I swear God like sends me messages like just from yeah. any kind of when I when I hit fill it in my gut, it's coming from God. He's like the for IRL master class. Like you're yes. about to do this shit for real, for real. Yeah, so I showed up and uh, I remember uh, she thought I was a stylist actually at first. So she took me to the show me the mood board and I'm looking at <laughs> it was like actually some of my images on her mood board and I was really? like what the fuck and it leave damn it. and um, what'd you say you're like nah I don't I just do kept, no I, once again I just kept faking it I make I was like yeah acting like I was a stylist yeah but we then could do that her assistant came and, and hey the stylist me. is yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? I, I don't know, dude. I thought this was Starbucks. I pulled up like, I didn't mean to come here. That's crazy. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, it was like for two days, we like shared like a photo pit together and she came to shoot a show and she was like, uh, do you mind if I share your office? I was like, what? So me, we had like uh, two hours and got to talk and wow. you know, get some advice, show some of my work. And uh, yeah, it was great. I, I have a funny story. The next day we're at the... Um, um, the Pulitzer Awards and we're both there shooting together and then I go to her because we took a Polaroid and I sent it to my friends and my friends were like yo she looks kind of like your mom it's kind of weird and I tell her I was like yeah my friend said you kind of look like my mom and then she puts her arm around me and she looks like this she said I am your mom <laughs> I was like oh. <laughs> alright I'll take that that's cool damn bro fuck that shit's crazy yeah isn't that crazy that shit's just one day, two days, whatever? Yeah. Like, think about all this wild shit that happened. It sucks because even if I wanted to tell every story I've ever experienced, I couldn't do it. Like, I don't, the backlog's, like, too thick and cloudy. Like, I don't remember. Yeah. It takes me to be, like, in that same situation and be like, damn, it's happened to me before. You know what I mean? Or some shit like that. It's so crazy. What's been inspiring you lately? Uh, Shit, I don't know. This? These interviews? Like it's, you know what I mean? It's always one thing I take away from ever, at least one thing. Like if I'm not getting at least one thing out of somebody, then I feel like I'm not doing, I'm not a good job or a good fucking podcast host or whatever. But now this shit has been cool. But to me, I just, I, I feel like creatively, I'm like really interested in like the social aspect. You know what I mean? Cause like everyone's moving to the need of social and there's like different ways you can target it and i'm starting to find a bunch of different creators that are coming in and finding creative ways to like dominate that space you know what i mean or but then you, you have to like go through all this trash shit because there's so many the output's so thick you know what yeah. i mean because everyone needs to hire someone so they hire someone and that person's probably trash and they put it out and it's just like oh fuck how do you find something good and then all of a sudden you find something that's really really good and it gets you jacked up and it's like damn i gotta do that yeah but honestly i have i tried to turn like all jobs down coming off tour and shit to uh just this year to like really focus building this education space because it's like by talking to you talking to whoever it's like whoever the fuck is listening to this right now i hope is able to turn around and be like fuck that's me you know what i mean they see yeah. themselves in you and are going through the same shit or right now while they're listening to this that's their day that they got to la and didn't get to shoot Kendrick and ran out of money and yeah, they're literally it's not, like, not the end of the world. It's not the end of the it's world. It's actually never the end of the world. It's the very beginning. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's funny. Like after that Bob got a uh, gig, things didn't work out too well, and uh, you know, because I, I mismanaged uh, the communication and the business side of it, and uh, they weren't even really fucking with me. Right. And I thought like, yo. Actually, to the point where he put out something publicly, like fuck Chris Parsons Whoa. and all that shit. For real? Yeah, maybe we might have to cut this out the interview, but no, this, this is good shit. Um, 
Yeah, because what? The footage wasn't there or something like that? No, they wanted a hard drive but of all the footage, which I was going to give, but I just honestly didn't have the money, and I sucked at communicating. I didn't necessarily communicate that to them. And then I remember one day I was like, I, it was all, all actually my fault. I, I told him I was going to send it, and I didn't send it. <laughs> but I overslept this one day, and I had all the intentions to send it, and then it just like was a shit storm. Yeah, and then people would, but yeah, they don't maybe understand. Maybe we really can't put this part. But in still, it's like that shit's so dumb because it's like we'll cut all that. You want to cut that part? Maybe potentially. You can tell me later, but honestly, yeah. I don't think that's a big deal because I've been there. Like even early on, I talked about this. I publicly spoke at my my university, and I was talking about how I took a client. But to me, the miscommunication is so key, bro. Because like you you being able to be like, hey guys, I really don't have two hundred dollars to buy another portable drive. Is there any way you could like send me money and I could put the shit on there and send it back? But then that makes it look like you can't handle this shit, or you yeah. owe them the drive, or you know what I mean, like no fucking way like that's the project that's how it is like if we have to buy it's an expense but we feel obligated to like eat it ourselves or you don't want to overstep or seem like you're needy or some shit you know what i mean and it and it builds up this weird fear to talk to someone about oh my god finances yeah, big time yeah that's the worst shit ever like what the fuck I don't, it's not you want the footage like you should have gave me a drive before we left and, and or you should send me a fedex like a uh, prepaid label or some shit like yeah. why do i have to go spend 45 dollars to ship this drive uh, but yeah, when I saw that the next morning, I literally thought my life was over. I was like, he has literally assassinated my entire career. And I thought, because, you know, I saw a lot of friends that I thought were cool. Like, it was just turning into bash Chris Chris Parsons day. Damn, that's crazy. All them Facebook, Twitter, that stuff is actually still up there. To really? This day. Yeah, I go back and look at it sometimes. Motivation. Yeah, you should frame that shit. Yeah, I, I did. I'm actually going to put that in my photo book. That would be dope. Put, like, all the, like text messages and all the because like there's uh, split sides of this you know like right greatness doesn't isn't always like fucking beautiful like sometimes there's you know you fuck up mm -hmm. and you got to know how to like you know honestly you have to know how to like face it and and realize you know, i fucked up and know how to like change up the game plan for the next time so you can right. stop being in the in that cycle or whatever right damn yeah. did you have you guys talked since then or is it still just like they left at that and no one really gets a shit yeah we kind of left i saw them like after that on tour i was out with kendrick and i saw them uh bob was on the same show and yeah everything was cool oh, i right. got no problems yeah that's yeah. good i mean that's all it is is as soon as you realize that you made a mistake it's okay to admit it you know what i mean yeah, i feel yeah, like people yeah. like feel like they can or that no i'm a professional i know what i'm doing i there's i did not fuck this up yeah social media also i mean it gives me anxiety sometimes even figuring out what my fucking caption is gonna be i'm like yo what the fuck who's gonna see this what are they gonna be thinking mm -hmm. you know and then on my nights then i have like this other cocky person comes out and i was like yo fuck this shit i, I know start, i know <laughs> i started making it rain fucking posts like yo i'm just slinging this yeah. shit yeah yeah damn because it's not that it's not that serious like bro it's not that serious like yeah. i i hate it i hate that that shit like we can't you know it's okay to share shit it's okay to like not be dope all the time or not be so fucking fly and post like the ill ass shot of you on a yacht but you really in a, a, a fucking honda civic or some shit like when you're on your days off from tour it's like oh i don't want people to know i'm broke or this and that like I get off q's tour and i made no money you know what i mean like I made no money, but everyone's like, man, like my cousins and shit go home for Christmas. They're like, yo, they better be paying you a lot. Or when I worked with Chris Brown, even before that, I, I hope you're making a ton of money. I'm like, I'm not, nope. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I haven't figured out how to even set myself up for that shit. I got played, but guess who's really playing them? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I put in the work and now I have a credit. And even though I don't have a bag to represent at the time, which is embarrassing, technically, because meanwhile, my friends back home get married. They have, you know, houses and 401ks and all this shit. And it's like, I'm sitting here sleeping on an air mattress with holes in it. Like, oh my God. Like, I just shot Taylor Swift and Mary J. Blige at Staples Center. And I came back home and I'm using my gum to pack a hole. And like, when I go home and you know, I've looked back in those people's faces that I'm like, I'm going to go make some of myself. And then you're like, I'm doing It's like, feels like it is. But you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's okay to be for real about it. I'm not afraid to talk about that shit on here. I'm not afraid to tell nobody about that shit. It's like, that's part of the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm getting kind of weirdly deep on this shit, but it's fun. Because <laughs> this shit is, it's crazy, bro. It's like, we all been through that shit and you, you learn as you go for sure. And, yeah, I think it's just all perspective. It's all perspective. Yeah.
because most people won't go through the the tough times in the beginning when you're trying to get your name out there there's a lot of things you're going to do that it's not going to get paid for because you know you're going to be proving yourself and you know one thing i learned on tour i mean every city man it's like almost at least five to ten photographers that are telling me like hey i I want your job or your life or, you know, I want to shoot this show or they hit me in my DMs. And unfortunately, it's, you know, can't happen at this moment. Right. But that doesn't mean it never, it's not ever going to happen. Would you do, what do you do now? Do you, uh, have you found yourself mentoring anybody? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I have a couple of assistants and anytime I meet anyone uh, that's young with a camera and, you know, I like to try to give the jewels that, you know, or the lessons that I had to learn the hard way so someone else doesn't have to. That's what this shit's all about. Yeah. <laughs> that's good though. I feel like that's it's hard to get caught up in this shit too. And I see a lot of people do it, and they're always like, "Yeah, I want to give back," or "I had a mentor," and I'm like, "Well, mentor some, like go mentor somebody." You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think it's easy for people in this industry to get caught up and not do it, even though that's how it, they got put on. But because shit's too busy and it's hard to even decide, like, how can you even manage talking to one more person or, every day or whatever? Uh, so I applaud you for that because that shit's helping out the next gen, bro. Like that's that's the whole point of all this shit is like how are they supposed to ever learn you know what i mean like yeah. i don't know it's just cool did you think of your uh your most iconic photos for yourself and videos yes all right for real all right let me think for 30 seconds this you get 30 seconds i'm gonna check and make sure there's not one more thing i'm gonna, while you're looking i'm gonna explain the jay-z reveal so there's this last video that chris shot that was like Kendrick at the studio and um it's just like a regular studio night and they were playing him the record that Jay came on but like they didn't know he didn't know Jay was going to be featured on it apparently and so they played the video and you just see his raw reaction when Jay's verse comes on up in the clouds whatever it was I was like oh shit that shit was the illest like I literally had oh man all right I got it but I'm just saying, I literally had, uh, I want to see if I can find that shit. Jay-Z, uh, Kendrick studio video. <laughs> I don't know how you find this shit. Uh, I literally had like fucking crazy, uh, goosebumps, bro. It, this video only has a half a million views. That's disrespect. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. All right. What? Well, sorry. Go on. Tell me. What is it? All right. It's coming back to me. It was. You forgot already? New York. You were in New York, February 28, 2013. Damn, this video's from 2013. Oxymoron session. Is this when it happens? Did they start playing this shit? It's the coolest. I don't want to play it because I'll, um, you know, copyright shit. All right. You got it? <laughs> almost. Stick with us, people. Just, Just keep listening. We're almost there. We're almost there. I shut the laptop and everything. We're almost there. He's just, what are you looking through? Instagram? Yep. <laughs> You got some crazy rings on, bro. Yeah, man. You know, I like rings. I'm not sure what to say about that, but, you know, rings are... Uh... Oh, it's getting closer. All right. Let's... You already know what you're looking for. Just talk about it. No, no, no. Um, uh, it's about to come back. Sorry. All right. Whatever he puts on here, Justin, if you're listening, when you're editing this, can you add this photo onto the screen? Because we're waiting. We're, <laughs> we're we almost up? there. You got to see this shit. My editor is going to put it up on the screen. Oh, shit. Tight. Oh, shit. Hmm. We're just stick with us, people. Man, I should run an ad. Um, what's a good ad I can talk about? How to charge a client guide. If you want to learn how to charge your clients and get more money when working with them, shop now. Shop bwc.com. Check it out. I don't know what day this releases, but uh, we just had a gnarly ass Black Friday sale. I don't know if there's anything left over on the merch. This is hilarious. While he's looking through this, I'm just gonna play. The, there may be merch left over, so shop bwc.com there. See if we got any more garments of your size. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and make sure to follow Chris on Instagram. That'd be yeah, dope. make sure you do that. That's uh, they will, they will, they always do. Dog, where is this shit? You don't remember what the illest moment was in your life? I'm sorry, there's a lot of ill moments in my life. That's true. You don't. I'm just saying, like one of the top ones. What's a top one? Something that you like to reflect back on, and be like, man, that shit was something else for me. How about it's a photo that I missed? Okay. That's probably like it's one of my fucking. You ever have that like yes. an image that you just like yes. you know like it was a fucking moment and you fucked up and you fucking missed it. Mm -hmm. So it was like the that first Grammys I remember and uh, it was um, 
after everything's been announced and uh you know the show's over and we're backstage and i remember i was like walking through a doorway and as i walk it's like a if you can picture this backstage uh at the staples they put up like a mock wall and then like a back, right, right. like a door yeah so as i'm going from backstage to the peak the show jay-z is literally crossing like we're walking through the doorway at the same time he's walking out i don't know it's like a, a strange metaphor for life for me right um and then i'm like oh shit like you know where he's going i'm like fuck he's walking towards kendrick yeah All right. so then i go back and then i'm like fuck please don't please i don't have my fucking camera because security took it i was like fuck please don't oh man don't let a, a great moment happen right now and i can't fucking oh it is happening they ah! are talking and i just remember that and kendrick's looking up to jay-z and jay-z just like he just remember I, he like folded his hands like you know uh He's like, I'm proud of you, whatever. And I was just like, damn, that was the fucking moment right there. And Free is right there. And Rhett's back there and Top. And I was just like, man, that's one of those ghost images I, you know. Hey, at least it's not your fault in this case. It don't sound like it. Security, security took your camera? Yeah, man. Why? I don't know, man. Fuck. Fucking shows, man, you know. Yeah, I know. But God damn, that's crazy. But hey, you know what? Maybe that one was for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Um, thank you for looking that up. So there's no photo we can actually show on screen right now. <laughs> just imagine the scenario, just like I did. <laughs> he sat there and dug forever till he's like, "Oh yeah, here's one I didn't have to look for." Um, all right. Before I let you go, I always do this shit where um my guests get to pick a hashtag, right? So I tell everyone to go to your Instagram at Parsons. They're gonna tag me at Ben Rovers World. Whoever's listening to this. And they're going to put this hashtag that you're going to pick so that you and I both know that they listen to this shit all the way through because we had like an hour, 30 something. Hmm. So if they listen all the way through, they're going to say whatever hashtag on like, and it could be like six months from now, you're going to see this shit pop up in your feed and be like, oh yeah, they listen to that podcast. That's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Anything you want. He's like, let me look back at my Instagram. <laughs> 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 Give me some examples of uh, past hashtags. Uh, past hashtags. One was Trump. I don't know. Uh, one was eat my ass. That's Cal Scroobies. Um, one was like, there's one right now. I All don't right, even let's know. Let's just do yeah, this one. Yeah. Hashtag life is free. Hard. Hard. All right, life is free. They put that shit on your thing. We'll both know. It'll be cool. We can tell them like, thanks for listening or whatever. And then it's all Gucci. Damn, all right, bro. I appreciate you doing this. Anything else you want to say? Hmm. I think we've covered it all. Yeah, this is the beginning. Yeah. For real, though. We're going to do another podcast in like three months, probably. Easy. All day. I have a lot more to talk about. There we go. All right, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, motherfuckers. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's one more thing. Skrr! What? Check out my new mixtape at datpiff.com slash Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? That was it. I was wanting to was plug, it? plug my mixtape. Well, where were you put that shit though? How, how's anyone ever gonna find SoundCloud it? SoundCloud all day, <laughs> and Instagram. Look at check my Instagram for music videos going down. Soon. Do you do you have a SoundCloud already like the handle or whatever? You want me to play a little bit, play a track for you? Can you? Of course. Is it original? Yeah. Sick. Please. I'm playing the piano. You played the piano? Yep. Damn. It's called, exclusive. Yep. It's called in my pea coat. In my pea coat. Yep. Did I you wear, show me this before? I wear pea coats a lot. It's a, I don't know. No, that's hard. You got any features on this shit? You yeah. know everybody. I know. It's like I might <laughs> you really just should do it. I really. You want to? Yo, I'm get. I need you as a feature, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Get the dust off, bro. <laughs> Tell your fans about your uh, glorious oh, uh, yeah, rap I know. career. Yeah, I oh. seen that shit. Fucking killed it. I killed it. Um, no, nah, well, you. Yeah, we'll no, I was it. just I was just trying to be funny. I was just like trying to interrupt for no reason, but I think we covered it all now. All right, good. Thanks, good. bro. Sorry, man. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm out of your motherfucker before he talks again. Bye. <laughs>
That's it for episode 138. Huge thank you to Parsons for coming on the show. Listen, each week I'm interviewing some of the most talented creators in the world. And if you have ever wanted to ask them a question directly, now is your motherfucking chance. By becoming a member of our Patreon community, you can be a part of the Q&A experience with each of our guests. Not only do Patreon members get to have their name and question read on the podcast, but they also get access to all the other amazing perks that we offer, like bonus podcast episodes, exclusive live streams, detailed behind the scenes breakdowns, and so much more. You can check it all out at jointhehomies.com. And an especially huge shout out to our Patreon producers, Craig McCall, Dustin Lenoti, and Trevor Carlson. Y'all are the shit. We appreciate you. Um, we also appreciate everyone that's listening to this episode. But before you start listening to another Black Widow Cream podcast episode, stop what you are doing right now. Hop on iTunes and leave us a review. Each review helps this podcast grow and reach more creators out there, which helps us continue to create this fire ass content for you guys every single motherfucking day. Subscribe to YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and uh, fucking keep being dope. All right, we love you. See you next week, you be-